Hi everyone, this is a continuation of our discussion for second period elements and molecular orbitals. And in this video we're going to discuss how to represent electron configuration for a diatomic molecules that are formed by elements in the second period. But before we go there, let's just remind ourselves of what we talked about in the last video, at the end of the last video, which is the series of molecular orbitals that are formed by orbitals, atomic orbitals, uh, in the second period. And remember that the way you form these molecular orbitals is you do linear combination, and as a result, you get these molecular orbitals. Okay? So, you remember what I was saying before, that in the second period element, the main thing to notice is that second period elements, they have valence electron either in the 2s and the 2p orbitals, right? Those are the atomic orbitals. And basically, to generate molecular orbitals, then you have to do linear combination of 2s orbitals and linear combination of 2p orbitals. And it turns out that for 2s orbitals, what you get is just uh, sigma 2s and sigma 2s star. And then for the 2p orbital, you can get two different types of molecular orbital. You can get the sigma, or you can get the pi molecular orbitals. And then the sigma, uh, there's two, there's two uh, sigma one bonding, one antibonding, and then the pi, there's the pi 2p, and then there's pi 2p star, and there's two of each uh, of them, okay? This uh, drawing here just shows you these uh, orbitals right here, the sigma and the pi 2p orbitals that we discussed before. And remember that here, I hope to show you again that this is the 2px, for example, that's being combined together doing the linear combination. Remember that's the same as getting the waves uh, added together, whether in a constructive or destructive interference manner. And if you do it constructively, then what you get is um, one form. And then if you do it destructively, you get the other form. Okay? So, in this case, you can see that both of them are sigma. Remember, sigma um, has to do with the fact that the orbitals would be symmetric around the bond axis, and in this case both of them are. And remember that these colors in, in for each one of these lobes just represent the phases, whether it's positive or negative. And then when you're doing the other two p orbitals, which are these guys here, then you get either the pi 2p or the one of the pi 2p's uh, orbital, whether the bonding or the antibonding. Okay? So that's just to show you what the results of those linear combinations are. Now let's talk about how these energy diagrams should be represented as. So it turns out that when you actually do calculations of energy using these wave functions that represent molecular orbitals, you find that even though these are all second period elements and they all have the same molecular orbitals, it turns out that the molecular orbitals not all uh, have the same energy. And that depends a lot on which molecules we're talking about. So it turns out that if you are making calculations with so from Be to N2 in the second period elements, you'll find that the energy diagram of the molecular orbital would look like this. So it would start with the sigma 2s, followed by sigma 2s star, and then pi 2p, and then sigma 2p, and then pi 2p star, and sigma 2p star. And then when you do this with the last two elements on the second period, which is oxygen and fluorine, you find that they actually have the following energy diagram. And the only difference, if you look carefully, is that there's basically a flip between these two uh, orbital. So up till N2, the pi is below the sigma, and then for the oxygen and fluorine, the sigma is below the pi. And the reason for this is a little complicated, actually, to discuss right here without knowing much about the mathematical form of the wave function. Basically, when you're doing a calculation for beryllium to nitrogen, you find that the 2s and the 2p orbitals are being used for linear combination they make some interaction and that affect the energy and the ordering of the molecular orbital and as a result you get the pi at the bottom and then the sigma at the top whereas with the oxygen and fluorine this interaction is not as strong so the sigma as a result ends up being at the bottom whereas uh, or slightly lower in energy comparing to comparison to the pi okay i don't want you necessarily worry too much about these reasoning because it's really, I mean, unless you understand the math, it's really hard to be able to reason it out why the energy has to be lower for one versus the other one. I think the only way to do this at this point, you know, especially with a general chemistry class like this, is just to memorize the two different ordering for 
atoms up till nitrogen, and then for oxygen fluorine, you have another ordering, okay? What we're going to do now is do a few examples to kind of show how we can use these energies to answer a few questions. I have a couple more topics to make a point of, and then we'll do examples probably in the next video. You want to keep this in mind when you're working with molecular orbitals, and that is that there are certain questions that the MO model helps you to answer that the valence bond model cannot, and these questions are the following. The first one is, what is the energy diagram of the molecular orbitals, right? That's the one of the important questions that you have to start with, which is basically coming up with one of these energy diagram and filling in the electrons according to the rules of quantum mechanics. And once you fill out the energy diagram, then you have to calculate the bond order for each of the molecules you're given, and then Next is to answer whether a molecule will exist, and remember that that depends on the bond order. And then another question you can answer with the value of the bond order that you calculate is what's the relative bond length or bond strength among a series of molecules that you're given. And then lastly, is the molecule that you have, is that a para or diamagnetic molecule? That also can be answered using the electron configuration, okay? Now, before we actually do examples, like I said, we'll probably do examples in the next video. Uh, the last thing I want to talk about is a set of molecules called heteronuclear diatomic molecules of the second period. So, when we're talking about second period elements uh, and first period elements, all these time we're talking about what we call homonuclear diatomic molecules, which means that the molecules have the same atoms, right? Two atoms, but they're the same type. Now we can talk about also heteronuclear diatomic molecules, which is molecules like this, right? So you have two atoms, but two atoms are not identical atoms. So CN, NO, and so on, CO, for example, OF. The question is then, how do you draw molecular orbital configuration for, for molecules like this? Well, it turns out that, again, unfortunately, it's a little too difficult to actually do the, you know, you can't do the calculation to figure out which molecular orbital diagram you should use. So going back to what we talked about a couple of slides ago, there is two different templates that you can use. You can use the template for molecular orbital for molecules from BE to N2, or you can use the template for molecules from O2 to F2. And in this class, I would just tell you, if I were to give you a molecule like one of these guys, I would just tell you which template to use. And as a result, you'll be able to draw the correct uh, electron configuration and then be able to answer the questions correctly, okay? So in the next video, I would show examples of both the homo and heteronuclear diatomic mo molecules so you get a, a feel for how you would be able to answer these type of questions.